So hi there, I'm here with Jillian Richards, a middle school teacher from Coppell ISD in Texas. Jillian, we're so excited to have you, and I just wanted to ask you, so you're using portfolios to help students visually see their growth over time, and I love what you're doing. Can you share with us how you guys have structured using collections and pages to structure um, student work? Yes, and thank you for having me with you today. Um, I'm always excited to share information because I'm always looking for new ways myself to organize um, and kind of structure things so that it benefits uh, the learner, but also keeps us in the loop as the educator. Um, so to start with, all of our Coppell ISD learners have what we call the CISD Artist Portfolio. And that is actually a collection that you can see here um, on this student example page. So we have our CISD artist portfolio, and then they have what they've created as a middle school collection. Um, one of the first things that was really important um, to me was that the CISD artist portfolio be held outside of any particular grade level or other groupings that would be created within the school. Um, because this, the portfolio for the artist could potentially run from kindergarten through 12th grade. And so we didn't want it to be stuck off somewhere in, you know, a sixth grade or 11th grade um, collection where you would have to search for it. Um, so we've really been pushing for that portfolio to remain outside um, of any other potential collections. Um, so one of our end goals with them having a separate portfolio instead of working by grade level was simply to be able to see their work K through 12 um, and then kind of organize it in a way that, you know, was aligned with our curriculum. And so um, if we click on her CISD portfolio, we now see her tiles that are inside of that collection and each one of these tiles is a page. Each of these pages is aligned with what we use for our curriculum, which comes from our AP strategies. So each one of these items here is a unit of study for us. Um, there are a couple that are extra. So we have contests, community projects, and we did a back to school reflection um, when we came back from Christmas break this year. But um, number two through number nine are all um, AP strategies objectives. So we really wanted to look, coming from the top down all the way to kindergarten, how can we demonstrate growth in each of those areas? And wow, so- That's great. So we'd love to kind of see how you've structured the page itself to help students see their growth over time. Can you show us an example of what, how you work within those pages? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I will just click on elements and principles and composition, um, which really is going to start at her art one year. So this is Roma and her, um, she's taken art A, art B and high school honors art one with me this year. And so she has been in art sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Her art one year is gonna show on the top of this page because I wanna see her most current work first. Um, so in for, for elements, principles and composition, we have three days to do it in art one because we've studied it for the last two years. And so we're really just kind of um, reviewing and um, I guess reminding ourselves of anything that fell out of our brains over the summer. Um, so as we scroll down from art one, I'm going to see everything that she did in art one until I get to her art B year. And we've just labeled it art one, art B, and then art A will be on the bottom. So to show you what that looks like in another artist's portfolio, I'm going to jump over to Michelle's and I'm already scrolled down to the bottom and we have her RA year on the bottom. And this is a contour drawing of her foot and her shoe. And so what I'm looking at is, uh, you know, in contour, I'm looking at drawing skill set. I'm looking at observation skill set. I'm looking at a lot of things, um, proportion and, um, in these drawings, 
we were looking at, okay, well, what do, what can we draw from our memory? And then we were looking at what are we drawing from observation when something is actually sitting in front of us and we're looking at it. And so they had several assignments that had to do with contour. Um, and this was her final contour work for her sixth grade year. But as we scroll up, we will start to see her art B work. So this was her final contour project. We did a bobblehead project. And so they got to choose an environment and all of this kind of stuff, but they um, really had to demonstrate, you know, what does contour look like in this imaginary setting? So I'm going from, you know, the, the pumpkin drawing and I'm looking at certain objectives that we as artists look at and I'm seeing that her line quality is improved. I'm seeing that um, she's pr done pretty well at drawing a contour portrait. Um, she's definitely done well at allowing me to see contour lines of objects, but still coming in and kind of shading in areas to demonstrate value. And as I move up, I see everything that led up to that bobblehead drawing where she took a picture of herself, um, where she had her room created in her sketchbook, all of her sketches to lead her to the point um, where she could create her bobblehead on her own. And then we had another quick assignment in there and some other things, the warm up things that we did along the way. So really what you're seeing as you scroll down from Art B is you're usually in my class, you're gonna see notes and then it's gonna trickle down to the final project in each section. So as I scroll up, now I'm looking at her Art One and I'm seeing massive improvements in the use of the space, the line quality, um, you know, I mean, this is a, this is a long leap um, from her pumpkin from Art A. So I'm definitely seeing, you know, her improvement in the use of contour line, which is what we're studying in this unit and is also held within this page in the order of units that we study throughout the year. Yeah, Jillian, that's so great and such an interesting way to really bring forth that learning and growth in such a visual way for students. Um, so final question for you, do your students do a lot of um, reflecting or do they appreciate seeing their own growth kind of all in one page so they realize where they started and how far they've come? Yes, uh, it's really funny because often you'll have a student go back and say, oh my gosh, I can't even believe I drew like that, or I drew that, or I can't believe that's there, you know, and I remind them that the reason that it's there is so that they can understand how much they've improved and how far they've come since they started, um, you know, their middle school years in art with me. Um, the other thing that I have that we really like, oh, sorry, let me go back, is this year, or maybe last year, I added um, contests and a few other items. So we added the contest folder. Um, this was because I had students who were participating in contests, like you can see our directory cover contest here. Um, and then I had students, that's the only one she has in there, but I had students who were competing in other contests outside of school. And I thought, why aren't we displaying those as well? So like our William T. Cosby Library will have a CosbyCon contest that um, students participate in. And um, there is the dart rail contest. There's all kinds of, you know, outside of school activities that sometimes I promote with them, but we don't spend class time on. And so I wanted them to have an opportunity um, to, you know, to display that work as well and show us like, hey, I'm not only doing this in class, but I'm doing these things outside of class. And these are the things that, you know, I've attempted, tried, or also been successful with. Um, Community projects, I put that in there last year because we really, the Art One class, we had a couple of community projects. Um, and actually, Roma should have some stuff in here because she participated uh, in an auction with some artwork as well. So we, we painted a trailer for our Outdoor Adventures program, and um, that was a community project because it was, you know, volunteer work. Um, the auction was a community project because we were raising money with the environmental club to build a well in Sudan. Um, and then, you know, something as simple as a back to school reflection assignment in this assignment, um, which was provided by Bulb, you guys made a great template. Um, I added to it to add a few little art components, 
but um, it really gave them the opportunity to reflect on the previous semester, mm -hmm. you know, what they had learned and what they wanted to learn coming up, what they felt was their biggest struggle the previous semester and what they felt was their strongest, um, you know, work that they achieved over the semester. Um, so I think that adding those tiles has really helped, um, you know, them kind of understand that this is also their space because I know some teachers will look at this and say, okay, well, where, where's the student buy-in? How are they going to want to participate in this um, if the teacher is organizing it all? And that being said, I think that, um, you know, the younger the students, for me personally, I feel like there needs to be some structure and there needs to be some organization. And as the students grow, they can add more of those personalized tiles, um, you know, or you could even have a, a student who wants to add a free draw tile mm -hmm. and maybe they free draw things all the time on their own. You know, I have a student who draws dinosaurs weekly. Well, he could have his own tile, his own page dedicated solely to dinosaurs, which I think would be great because I love dinosaurs. But, um, you know, so do I, I have three boys, dinosaurs yeah. in my world. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always waiting for the next Jurassic Park. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, having that structure there for them is really important because we're, we're trying to demonstrate growth. We're trying to see growth. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, you know, for the, the student to be able to look at their career and whatever it is that they're working in. And when I say career, I mean like their, you know, their art career um in school i really want them to be able to look at it you know holistically and look and see okay you know in fifth grade i couldn't draw myself you know i was working on it i can see the foundation is there you know but by the time you know i'm a junior in high school not only can i draw myself but i can draw everyone in my family mm. you know and i think that that's um you know students they become so busy that they forget where they've been yep. And so I think that reflective piece is a huge part of the portfolio is it's not just, um, you know, showcasing the work so that someone can just look at it. Yeah. Jillian, that was so great. Um, I just appreciate your time and sharing the things that you've been doing on, with Bulb with your students. Um, thank you so much. You're so welcome.